In a world where we have consumer audio products that don't have Bluetooth output, we need something to save the day. And that's where the Lumsing Bluetooth transmitter and receiver comes to play. And it does come to play. It plays in two different ways. It transmits audio to a Bluetooth device, such as a Bluetooth speaker. It also receives Bluetooth signals and then transmits them into an old analog source, such as a home stereo system or your car stereo. So if your car stereo doesn't have Bluetooth input on it and you wish it did, you can buy one of these and make it Bluetooth. So let's see what this little uh, beauty comes with. Now this guy can be your, your little pal, your little friend when it comes to transmitting and receiving Bluetooth audio. And you'll see just how small this little guy is. Got the name there at the bottom, Lumsing. And it has a built-in battery. It has uh, the 3.5 millimeter jacks on the top for both input and output. And your USB charger there in the middle, charging port. It comes with these amazing uh, accessories, such as this cable here. So 3.5 to 3.5. It comes with the cable to charge it. And like many of these things that are sold nowadays they don't actually have a charger with them they expect you to find a Bluetooth plug somewhere to plug that in but it does come with this RCA output and this is cool because this can allow this little device to connect to your home receiver or even a pair of uh, computer speakers so that you can transmit Bluetooth audio into that old pair of computer speakers or home stereo system now I have some examples of some things that you might use this Bluetooth device with. For example, a lot of new cars nowadays don't have CD players and you want to play the CD player through your car stereo and it does have Bluetooth. Then you can take your Discman with you and listen to some music that way. You could also take your 8-track player and play it through this system and I'll demonstrate that here in a moment. And other things like a mini disc player or a cassette player or even your pocket rocker from 1980 something and you want to play your little pocket rocker tapes through it you could do that as well since the pocket rocker has a 3.5 millimeter jack on the side then over here I have some examples of some Bluetooth speakers that you could possibly pair this with so the one by one splash proof speaker that you've seen on my channel before the Jam 2 that's also on my channel and maybe even one of these cheap little gift Bluetooth uh, speakers like this one I got for Barnes Jewish Hospital here in St. Louis. So whatever the case, whatever the Bluetooth speaker might be, you can pair it with this little adapter and play your old analog sources through it. Now I have previously gone ahead and paired it with my Jam 2 and you can see the little blue light flashing right in there somewhere. There it goes. So what I want to do first is show you how to play uh, an 8-track through your little Bluetooth speaker. So now some of these Bluetooth speakers actually have 3.5 millimeter audio jacks on the back like this one does. So technically I could just connect the 8-track directly into the line in there. But just for the sake of demonstration, we're going to pretend it doesn't have that jack. So what I would do is take the output from my 8-track player, which is right here, and I'm going to take my little device and I'm going to plug it into the transmit side. All right, because I'm going to transmit the audio from the Lumsing over to my Bluetooth speaker. So what I do is turn it on and by the tone you just heard, it has already paired. Now to pair it, you're going to hold down this button here in the middle and in the circle here it shows you how much battery life you have left so I have all six bars so that means I have plenty of power left in my Lumsing okay so I'm gonna set that there for a moment I've paired it with my Jam 2 now all I have to do is insert my 2XL 8-track tape 2XL tapes were 8-track educational tapes played through a little 8-track robot but I'm going to play them through a standard 8-track player, my JVC. So if I plug that in, and we'll hear 2XL yell at us for picking the wrong answer, probably. Not correct. Not correct. You chose answer A, English. Mandarin Chinese is spoken by more people throughout the world than any other language. 640 million people speak Mandarin Chinese. English is second, with about half this number speaking English. 
You chose A, not correct. See, I told you we were going to get yelled at. All right. So that's from the Guinness Book of uh, World Records 8-track tape there. Now let's say I want to go ahead and play my CD player. We mentioned that earlier that some new cars don't have CD players. So what I'll do is I'll actually use the adapter that came with it, which is this 3.5 to 3.5 that you see here. And as you can see, once I unplugged the plug from the Lumsing, it powered off. All right, which is actually kind of handy because that's a great way to turn the thing off if you're in a hurry. So I can plug that back in and turn the unit back on. And we should hear the little magic s sound or tone from the Jam 2 telling us it's been repaired. Not as in fixed, but, you know, repaired. And it's searching for a signal here. Searching for someone to talk to. And while it does that, I will go ahead and un or plug the other side in to the earphone jack on my CD player. Now this CD player happens to have an audio output on the back as well, but we're going to go ahead and use the, the, uh, the headphone output. So again, we're waiting for the unit to repair with our speaker. I might go ahead and try turning it off and back on again, just to see if that speeds anything up. Sorry that you have to look at my hand there. Get it out of the picture. There we go. We're reconnected now with our Jam 2, and now I can hit play on my Sony Discman. It's a D34. And I'll play you a, a demonstration CD that I have in there. Listen closely to virtual reality for your ears. So you can hear the sound quality is actually quite superb. Now what we want to do next is to demonstrate the other side of this uh, little device, the Lumsing, and we want to transmit some audio into another device. And uh, I was going to pick my little cheap watch that I review on my channel here. It uh, actually has Bluetooth pairing capability and I can play music from a memory card inside this little watch into the Lumsing and then output it to a, uh, an older stereo system. So let's try that next. For my second demonstration, what I'd like to do is show you how to use the Lumsing as a receiver instead of a transmitter. So what I've done is taken a pair of ordinary Dell computer speakers and attached them to the Lumsing on the receiving end side. Then what I do is power up the Lumsing and then double tap the little button in the middle and then the little ring here around the side will fluctuate. You'll see it spinning around. Then go to your device, your smartphone, go into your settings, into Bluetooth, and you'll see the RT418 as you see here. So I'm attached to the RT418. Once I got the, get the two units paired, then I can go into my music playback app and I can play a song that I've gotten off of the YouTube audio library. And it sounds like this. Then I can crank it up. So there we go. Now we're using the Lumsing as a receiver for the audio that's on my smartphone. And I can go in and pause the audio. Now on the other video that I made uh, about this cheap smartwatch, I uh, was asked whether or not the smartwatch could play music. And uh, I wanted to demonstrate for you that the Lumsing is not the issue in this case. 
but uh, you can in fact play music from a smartwatch onto your Lumsing as well. But this smartwatch has a little bit of an issue with playback of audio, but I'll at least demonstrate how to pair it. So what I do is go back to my Lumsing and double tap the button in the middle and you'll see the little spinning dial. Then what I'll do is go to my watch and I'm gonna search for a new device and there you see the RT418. I'm gonna hit pair And yes, I'll accept connections. And I may have double tapped a couple too many times there. All right, so we are connected now. Now I can go back, spin over to my music app on my smartwatch. And I'm going to go into the audio player. If I can find it. I passed it, didn't I? There it is and hit play. So see it's a little picky as to what it will connect to and it kind of breaks in and out. But I wanted you to see that it isn't in fact the uh, the smartwatch that's the problem. I mean it's not the lumsing that's the problem, it's the smartwatch. I actually paired the smartwatch with my car that has Bluetooth and it plays exactly the same way with the sound breaking up, breaking in and out. So now it's kind of playing. And I'll go ahead and play the next song. Patch a Belly. These are all royalty free songs I got off the Google Audio Library. Play. So again, you can see this little watch is a little finicky as to what it will play through. There's some jazz. So this little cheap smartwatch has an SD card on the inside that I've dumped all this music onto. And I guess it'll play fine as long as it's sitting close to the Lumsing. Move it away. Ooh, it's still working. Hey, very nice. So right now, this is my audio source transmitting music to the Lumsing playing through my computer speakers. Pretty nifty, huh? And in stereo, of course. And unfortunately, I don't have a stereo microphone on my iPhone, so you don't get to hear it in stereo on here. So that concludes our demonstration of the Lumsing Bluetooth Hi-Fi Dual Mode Transceiver. And me being a, uh, a guy interested in old audio as well as modern audio devices, this is a pretty cool gadget to have around because as we showed you at the beginning, I can play all that old weird stuff in a lot of newer uh, circumstances with Bluetooth speakers and in cars and so forth. And uh, so anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Please share it with a friend, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below or ask a question if you happen to have one. And again, thank you for watching.